Hello, I'm Gavin Clark, and I'm here with the National Museum of Computing at Fletchley Park, which houses the largest collection of working historical computers. And I'm here with some of the experts, and we've been taking your questions on Twitter about the collection and other historical uh, computers. We've had one from Steve Battle, and he's asked us about one particularly interesting machine. Um, do you think Museums Victoria might ever power up its 1949 Syrac? It could give you the it could give the 1951 Harwell Decatron which a run for its money. Now, not many people might have heard of Syrac, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it's somehow it's analogous to the Harwell Decatron which, which we're going to get into, which is a very, very large and impressive machine at uh, TNMOC. Uh, it was, of course, Australia's first digital computer um, and is contemporary to the witch. I'm here with uh, Sheridan Williams and Roger Johnson, who know a little bit about, well, quite a lot about both those machines. Gentlemen, can you tell us a little bit, set the scene. What is, uh, what is Cir Cirac? What did it do? And how does it compare, compete with which, which is in the museum here? Well, Cirac, as it should be pronounced, um, is claimed to be the fourth electronic digital computer in the world. Um, it, there's always argument about numbers, but it, it's not, it, it is earlier than the witch by about a year. Right. Um, it's certainly far superior to the witch in as much as it's fully electronic, it has no uh, relay systems at all. Uh, its specification is, I think, quite staggering. Uh, it's got 2K of memory, which was the um, Mercury delay line based. It can do about 500 instructions a second. Uh, compare that with the witch, which can take up to three seconds just to do a simple, uh, simple operation. Uh, 2,000 valves as well makes it, you know, similar in size to the uh, to Colossus. Um, I went to visit it, uh, I think, about five years ago, and spoke to the senior curator there, David Demont and uh, said, are they ever going to get it working? Because obviously, compared to the witch, ours is, the witch is the oldest, earliest electronic digital computer that actually is original and works, mm -hmm. and it would be beaten by Cyrac if they got it working. But his statement was they'd rather keep it exactly as it is now um, rather than fiddle around with it to make it work. And to make it work, it would be replacing the Mercury delay lines um, and so many other things that they, they would prefer much prefer to keep it exactly as it is so that's my so, understanding so you'd have a completely bit like kramer's broom you have a completely new machine rather than the original machine i think it's a little bit like our hollerith heck if you come and visit that if you look at the back of it you'd have to change so many components that it would no longer be original mm. um and so getting it working would be you know possible but i think impractical and i think that's the way they're looking at the cyrac and also something of that complexity um would need constant maintenance it would you know would have to be switched on perhaps once a month as a demo but it would take them ages to get it working each time i think it would just be a liability mm. um it's remarkable uh, i suppose it's maybe it's common and where where australia and the uk are in the world I'm not aware that we hear so much about the Australian machine so much compared to uh, Decatron Witch. Um, is it is it particularly well known? Is it known in in computing circles, or is it just it's just a, is it kind of an open secret as far as the computing industry heritage no. industry is concerned? Well, let Roger answer that possibly. It's, I, it's not an open it's not an open secret at all. It wasn't in any way anything to do with mm. secrecy. I just think it's. Um, they've never really publicised it much and therefore it hasn't been too well known about. I, I, I think uh, Sheridan's right that uh, it's not, it's in the custody of, uh, I think, of, of the university, um, although it's in a public museum. Um, and it's not been greatly publicised. Uh, it certainly deserves to be, um, it, like so many, it suffers from being in Australia or, or, or Europe for that matter, um, rather than in the United States, in which mm -hmm. case it would be loudly trumpeted as the, uh, I think it's the, the oldest extant uh, digital computer. Um, so uh, it deserves to be far better known, but it's just not on the tourist trail mm -hmm. and the computer history community in Australia uh, is is keen but it's small in number mm. and so i i think it's just 
uh, really not had the publicity it should have done. What was, um, briefly, what was it used for? Um, and, and I suppose, what was the size of the... Here we, lot of, we hear a lot about the, the post-war developments that went on. Was there that same energy in Australia in the evolution of the, the generation, these first generation of systems after the war? Was it the same energy or is it uh, a, a different pace in Australia? Yeah, I mean, it shows the, the, the size of it. it it's a, a massive machine. It was a, a scientific machine used by um, universities and research. And some of the software that I've got for it um, are subroutines for integration, square roots, that kind of thing. So um, the little little box in the middle, as you see there, oh, just swapped off it. The one on the left, the, the edge on brown box is the rack. That's it, straight in front of you. The rack containing software. The the um, the little boxes are it's 12 track tape 12 hole tape mm -hmm. so quite unusual compared to any other forms of input Sheridan my recollection is it also has a drum a magnetic drum which, yes it does yes which again almost certainly uh, it would not be practical to reuse uh, it, it would have to be either completely rebuilt or a duplicate built, and it would, which again would simply be contrary to museum protocols, mm. where you've got a unique machine. It, it just adds to the problems of getting any of these early machines going, and yeah. it basically renders it impossible, frankly, uh, given the responsibilities of preserving the machine itself for future generations. It's a, tie, it's a tough argument, it's a restor restoration versus preservation, isn't it? I think the witch is unique in as much as because it was built to be ultra, ultra reliable, it was using components that could easily be replaced or restored. Um, and I don't think any other computer of that generation followed, or, or even today, follows that sort of logic. So mm -hmm. we could restore to working order the witch but you just physically cannot restore something like the heck or sirac mm -hmm. or even you know things like edsac which of course mm -hmm. was a replica that's that's funny i think i think that that kind of covers uh sirac i'm glad i got them pr pronouncing it correctly um <laughs> and, I, and i hope that answers the question <laughs>